Good morning YouTube. Today is the 30th of December. We are not even halfway through harvest and today we are gonna go and harvest some wheat. Okay guys, so I'm gonna give you a bit of commentary on the last three, four to five days. Uh, morale has just been at an all time low here because we've had an absolute disaster. Uh, Boxing Day or the day after Christmas, that was when we had the breakdown with the header. Um, that needed a new fan belt. John Deere make a shorter fan belt and I put a new tensioner on and that cured the fan belt slipping issue that we had. We got going the next day and we didn't get very far and we had an absolute disaster. Like, there's no other way to put it, it's just one of those moments where your stomach just sinks and you feel sick and just, yeah, it's just hard to explain but anyway um, here yeah, I'll turn the camera around uh, don't know how well the camera will pick it up on here but uh, basically uh, the chaser bin the front side of the chaser bin auger caught the uh, back side of the header auger so you know it doesn't look too bad there it just looks like a bit of a scrape but it gave this whole thing a really good tug forward uh, it did a bit of damage down in here to a few panels it's been into Jamestown engineering and they've straightened it out but it's never really going to be the same again uh, it doesn't really sit on its saddle properly when it comes all the way back in so but it, it's going for now i mean it could be a lot worse the chaser bin well that came off a lot worse that's in it um Jamestown engineering now having a new whole new top section of the auger tube made up so i had to go to vennings and go get a whole heap of new tubing and bearings and all this sort of stuff so they're in there doing that at the moment hopefully they're having a pretty good run with it It'd be really nice to have it back so anyway the day after that happened we had five millimeters of rain no harvest happened uh, yesterday I got back out in the afternoon and managed to get about 120 ton off which was nice like considering I didn't get out here till you know three o'clock in the afternoon and get started just because moisture and the grain was a little bit high and it was a bit tough but you know, at least we're going, I guess, that's the main thing, but it's just, you know, there's no point in beating beating yourself or anyone else up over these situations because, you know, it's happened now and this sort of stuff happens on farms every day all over the world. It might not be a common occurrence, but it doesn't matter. This stuff happens all the time everywhere. So you just gotta you just gotta find a way to get over it really. That's the hardest part, so but like I said, my morale's been at a bit of an all-time low. I've sort of just completely lost interest in harvest at the moment because, you know, you just spend so much time caring for this machinery. You pour thousands, tens of thousands of dollars into this machine this year and you go out and you get a chaser bin and you try and increase your efficiencies and all these sorts of things and then something like that happens and you just think, why do I put in all the effort? But like I said, you just got to get your chin up and find a way to get over it and get on with it because there's still crop out here to be harvested there's still a lot of crop to be harvested the head is going you know we can send that back in to get some more repairs done to it after harvest the main thing is that it's moving for now so that's a bit of a long-winded um, explanation of what's happened but yeah she's been a pretty ordinary few days to be honest so it is what it is guys <sighs> ah. I'm glad that morning routine is out of the way. That, I think that takes, I reckon it's a good couple of hours every day for me to get that machine ready to roll. And that's, uh, you know, giving the engine a blow down, checking fluids, cleaning windows, empty the rock trap, grease anything that needs to be greased. And then if I need to, I take the fuel cart home and refill that. So, you know, it just, it's a bit of a time killer, to be honest, but uh, I just got a really good phone call really really good phone call and kudos to Jamestown Engineering because they already finished with the chaser bin uh, it's, it's operational again how they have managed to get that done in like two days it's astounding really I, I just can't believe it but anyway that's great we'll go grab it well there she is me and dad just went straight in and picked it up like a new one eh
Well, I think they've done a pretty bang up job there. So it looks great. I, I can't believe they fixed that in two days. So I went over to Kadena, like Venning's at Kadena, and I picked up a new tube, a headboard and a bearing and a hinge. And they had to cut the spout in it, weld it all up, um, put the bearing in the flighting, uh, put the, you know, weld the new hinge on, align everything, and paint it. So that is phenomenal work. Got absolutely nothing but praise for those guys to roll in there just after Christmas. Most, pretty much most of the workforce is on holidays, I think, and for them to turn that out like that, that's, uh, that's pretty cool. Is it like a new one? Probably not quite, but it's uh, gonna be about as close as you'll ever get, so that's awesome. So I just got another job to do this morning, and that is another float sensor on the front. Uh, ever since I did the other side, it's been cutting sweet as really most of the time, but ever since I've done it, the other side seems like it cuts high every now and then. So I've been putting it off, putting it off, and yesterday I was like, I just need to get in there and do it. So I'm gonna go up there right now and uh, swap him over and get the voltages right and run another calibration and we should be golden. I don't know whether the camera will pick him up or hear him but there is grasshoppers absolutely everywhere. They just came out of nowhere yesterday moving north from the north to the south and I'm just really worried that when we're harvesting we're going to start scooping these bad boys up. There's one. <laughs> so yeah, it's a bit concerning, but anyway, not much you can do. So I just put that bad boy back in the exact same position as the old one, and that is on the exact same voltage as the right-hand side. So. I ain't gonna change nothing, I'm just gonna tighten that up and then give it a calibration. Right, go through to our calibrations. Go to our header. Yes, high idle. Oh yeah, we're done. Lovely, lovely. Well, I think we're looking relatively even Stevens across there at the moment, so I hope that it is a beautiful thing. So the funny thing was that uh, I pulled the sensor off and I thought, oh, if you watch the other video, I gave the sensor a bit of a turn and the one on the other side wouldn't self, well, it wouldn't return back, the spring in it was busted. Well, that one I pulled it off and I gave it a spin with the screwdriver and it jammed and I thought, oh yeah, this one's knackered too, but then it freed up. So I don't know whether it's just a bit old and sticky and was catching every now and then or something like that, but we'll give that a go and hopefully that'll be a good thing. So I am just going to put some fuel, or get some fuel for the auger, uh, one of the augers, put some fuel in the blower, get some food. I reckon we can just about roll, guys. Change of plans, got a truck to load. Well, I'm locked and loaded and ready to go. Ready to go reap some grasshoppers by the looks of it. <laughs> Well, I want to say, hopefully we can peel off a bunch of acres today, but instead I'm going to say, let's see what we can break today, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> well, I can't see any grasshoppers in there, so that's lovely. The sample's looking a little hard to separate at the moment, still a bit waiting for things to warm up a little bit, but it's just been a bit like that this year, to be honest. Um, just ending out with a few white heads in there. I think it's just from all the rain that we had, to be honest, but this is um, septa wheat, and typically, it is very, very easy to separate. So easy, in fact, the last two years, before this, the wind shook out a whole heap on the ground. So I'm a little surprised at how sticky it is, but I guess it's better in the head than on the ground when you get wind. So this is shaping up to be a very, very handy crop. Before that, the load got delivered last night, I was my estimations were that it was sitting around seven ton to the hectare, but uh, that load was a bit lighter than I was sort of thinking it was going to be. So it's yeah, it's going to finish up somewhere between six and a half and seven ton to the hectare, I think, which is 
absolutely great but the only problem with that is well I mean I'm just nitpicking really but the, the grain quality is a bit crap my first load that went out of here 60 ton road train load got downgraded because of 3% um, white grain disorder it's very frustrating because 3% is a very small amount but so coincidentally I've actually changed where I'm delivering this grain to I'm going to deliver it to Crystal Brook now because they have a high tolerance on white grain this order is up to 10% and they pay more so I have made the old switcheroo and funnily enough the first load that went to Crystal Brook went APW which is a really good grade so <laughs> you can't win mate you really can't win now I thought I should actually just mention white grain disorder just in case you don't know what it is it's basically it's a fungal disease affecting the actual grain itself if you Google it, you'll be able to find a picture of it. Basically, it just it is what it is. It turns the grain white, and it's um, caused by fungus. So I don't know. Like this is the first time we've ever had to deal with it. We've never had it before. Um, but you know, when was the last time that we had our average rainfall in three and a half months? I don't know. You might be going back quite a long way to achieve that. So it's uh, a bit disappointing. But at the end of the day, you know, we did everything that we really. I mean, maybe we could have come back with another fungicide, maybe, but the, the, the word from the agronomist and, and that was that it's probably not really necessary and it'll be interesting to see because I did go back with three fungicides on some stuff. Some stuff I ran the fungicide applications out probably longer than I should have, like I applied and then I waited a bit too long. So it'll be interesting to see these two paddocks here, I kind of rushed back in almost and did another one because they were an earlier crop and I wanted to put UAN, like liquid urea on. Um, just to give it a bit of a boost and help it with protein when it was filling the grain and all that sort of thing. So I kind of rushed back because the growth stage of these crops was a bit further along and I almost wished that I, I left it, you know, maybe another week or two. But at the same time, we were battling really bad weather, a lot of rain, and it was kind of like now's my time to put this UAN on and while I'm at it, I'll put a fungicide out at the same time. So. This paddock was a little bit broken up. The one above, I went really early with the fungicides on that one. So it'll be interesting to see what the grain's like in there. And I got a feeling that it will be worse. But six hectares left in here and we're gonna find out. Set him loose in the header now. <laughs> um, yeah, tomorrow I'm not going to be around. It's my lovely wife's birthday. We booked a holiday away at this time of the year thinking that, well, we'd either be finished harvest or very, very close to it. So we booked to go away with some friends. So I'm basically going to miss out on all of that, but I decided to take one day tomorrow. Dad's just going to put in a few hours on the header. So I said, well, he goes, oh, well, might as well sit in here and have a bit of a go and get my head around everything because he doesn't get in there too often these days. And I said, well, you might as well just drive it and I'll just drive the chaser bin today. the end of the first paddock a week for 2022 man it has been a grind as usual all right swap back time uh, i'm just going to cut into this next paddock and then we might swap back a little bit later whoa are you guys even looking at me <laughs> oh thank goodness i thought he was never going to leave no that was actually a salesman from the local john deere dealer he saw that we were going and thought he'd stop in and say good day so he spent probably a good couple of hours out here riding around with me actually in the end so it was um kept me company but it's also kept me off the camera for a while and in that time you know at the start of the day when i said what can we break today well 
Well, 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 we broke something. Well, we sort of did anyway. It's, it's going again now, but Dad was unloading the chaser bin and then all of a sudden the whole thing just choked up. Started burning off the uh, slip clutch. So you had to go home, get uh, a hopper, bring an auger out, dig a hole under the chaser bin, put the auger under the chaser bin and then auger out, open up one of the doors on the bottom of the chaser bin and drain all the, all the grain out of it and then auger it into a bin. So he did that and he's managed to get it going again. So I had to cut into this paddock on my own. It took, it took a long time and it was a bit tedious because the bins are all the way back down there. But and not, nevertheless, he's, uh, he's got it going again and we're in action, so. New rules at Lock Valley Coleman are the uh, chaser bin does not go under the header unless the auger is in. That's the new rules, alright? That way nothing bad can ever happen. the drone getting you guys some footage I sort of got loaded and then I drove down the other end of the paddock and I thought I'll fly the drone down there and and uh, take it down well I flew it down to the other end of the paddock where I'd stopped and I hopped out of the tractor and then I couldn't see the drone anywhere well apparently somehow it ended up in the chaser bin she took a bit of a hit the poor thing I think it destroyed a couple of the blades as well but luckily I got some spare ones at home well I, I failed my first test as a chaser bin driver I, I didn't make it back in time but I blame it on having a top off th two bins then so you know plus I crashed my drone <laughs> well I'm back in my glass castle uh, I got kicked out again of the chaser bin because obviously I, I didn't cut the mustard nah I just uh, stretched the legs there and um, have a bit of a fly of the drone which was an epic fail but on a good note, we've actually managed to make some decent progress this afternoon, even though I didn't have a chaser bin for a couple of hours, so that's good news. And as far as I know, none of my other loads have been knocked back for white grain, so that is yeah, it's a plus, mate. you just got to change your delivery site, and that solves all your problems. Well, i got another trucky here. i got to go give him some details so that he can take another load out. Well, the sun is setting on yet another day of harvest, uh, and it is not very warm out there. It's not been well, it's been a nice warm enough day, but it's not hot enough for it to uh, carry through to the night. So as soon as that sun starts going down, it just toughens up straight away, and uh, you 
just you notice the difference as soon as you start to lose that heat. So it's, I don't think we'll be able to go for too long tonight, unfortunately. We'll keep hacking away here, maybe make sure there's enough there for uh, one more load. Well, that is going to be it for another day of harvest, everyone. Uh, even the swivel joint on my camera has given up the ghost today as well. So that's just a sign of the times, I think. <laughs> but uh, anyway, thank you very much for joining me, guys. Hope you enjoyed it. New Year's Eve is tomorrow, so Happy New Year, even though this will probably come out in January sometime. Hope 2023 is awesome for everyone. Once again, have a good one and we'll see you next time.